So uh, welcome to the second half, uh, second part of uh, Alexander Jolivet's talk. So Alexander, you can you can begin whenever you are ready. Okay, thanks. You hear me? Uh, yes, but we can't see your screen. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm doing it right now. So you see my screen now? Yes, I, of course. Yes. Okay, thanks a lot. <clears throat> so uh, let me. Uh, Start where we have finished. Excuse me, sir. Excuse me, sir. Well, yes. So your video is off. I mean. Uh... Okay. So. Um, Enable your video. So the the, the question uh, uh, we were interested in is. Uh, <clears throat> uh, so Alexander. Uh, yes. Sorry to interrupt. So uh, the your video is off. So uh, that was the. Uh, uh, so is it possible to turn your video on? Okay, so now we, we have time-dependent sources, time-dependent measurements, and we want to recover sigma k from this time-dependent uh, setting. And so uh, let me remember, remind you that uh, we have a unique solution to the non-stationary uh, linear Boltzmann equation, which is given by this uh, formula. And uh, phi is uh, our light source. And uh, now we have a duhamel formula for you. Uh, this duhamel for formula is uh, due to the fact that the generator of u is uh, a sum of t1 and k. And t1 gen generator of t1 is u1, and k is a bonded operator. And uh, this gives you the Duhamel formula, which is given right here. So u is uh, equal to u1, which is uh, explicit. u1 is given right here. And plus uh, in integral over, over uh, zero r prime, the segment zero a prime of u1 r prime minus s prime k u s prime ds prime. So you applied this Duhamel formula here. And uh, you, you immediately obtain um, a decomposition for the albedo operator of the same uh, flavor, flavor than before. Uh, I mean that A is the sum, uh, the, Schwarz, the distribution kernel of A is the sum of three terms. Uh, one is due to the ballistic parts. A part uh, alpha two is due to the single scattering part and alpha three is uh, the multiple scattering part. So alpha one is explicitly given by this uh, distribution, uh, uh, by this expression. So you again see the x squared transform of sigma uh, over the straight line uh, that goes through x in direction v. And uh, you have the product of uh, three delta function, a delta function for the velocity variable, a delta function on the spatial variable, and a delta function now, a new one, uh, on the time variable. And uh, for alpha two, you again have the same expression as before, except that you have a new delta function, which is uh, with a delta function for any dimension, it's, uh, it, it is uh, on the time variable and it is given by this, uh, this expression here. And uh, the, the last one is again a, func uh, a function which belongs to L infinity gamma minus L1 lock uh, of uh, R L L1 gamma plus dig sign. <clears throat> so, uh, you uh, you apply you know, the same same scheme as before. So let me uh, show you the picture again. But this time you can play with time. So you will have a, a, a delta uh, 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 sources will will approximate a delta function uh, in x zero prime, a delta function in v zero prime. And a delta function uh, near the time t uh, equal to zero. And uh, from this, you obtain that uh, the ballistic photon will uh, uh, will concentrate at this point in that direction, and at a time which is given by uh, the the length of this segment. So the travel time to uh, x zero prime 
v0 prime. And for the uh, single scattering term, so if you take uh, consider photon which are scattered from the direction v0 prime and uh, 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 to the direction v from x0 prime, then you, you still have uh, this, this line that will focus at this line at a time which is given, for example, for this point, the time needed is the length of this segment plus this one, here, this one, and this one, and so on. And if you have a, 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 multi, a photon which has scattered twice, first uh, coming from the direction V0 prime and in the ending with, with the direction V at the same point at the single photon, the only single photon which has done this, this travel, then the time at which the multiple photon will arrive, it will be larger than the, the single photon. And uh, so playing with that, uh, uh, you can build a detector uh, uh, of psi, which will focus specially on this line. And in time variable will be adjust uh, to the time variable, uh, uh, the, the arrival time of the of the single photon, and uh, then you obtain exactly the same results as, as before, uh, which is given right here. So you have just this constraint constraint about uh, the 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 time t. Um, until when, uh, so this is the time uh, uh, during, this is the time during uh, which you, uh, you measure. So this time has to be big enough uh, so that you uh, are able to measure uh, all, uh, all photon. For example, a ballistic photon. So here it will need uh, uh, a time two plus x zero v x zero prime v zero prime to reach this point and to be measured. So it means that if you want to collect all ba ballistic photon, you will need a time, uh, and uh, for any uh, source uh, delta sources uh, in x zero v prime uh, x zero prime v zero prime, you will you will you will need a time which is uh, bigger than the di diameter of the domain. And in that case, you, you are able to prove that A uniquely determine a sigma. So here, I, uh, I'm sorry about that. Uh, here, the statement is, uh, is, uh, is, so this is stated for uh, isotropic uh, sigma. It's not, uh, again, you will have a good equivalence. And so here, it's really a sigma of X. So I put a, a V here, but, uh, but for this statement, you need to consider only isotropic sigma. And for uh, single scattering, uh, single scattering photons, you you will need, uh, for example, if you want to uh, recover ballistic photons that are uh, exiting x zero prime in the direction minus v zero prime, if you want. Uh, to collect all of them, then you will need to consider uh, all photons that, that are reflected along this line and goes back in this direction. And this is uh, uh, the maximum length you can have. And uh, th that's why you have uh, this statement. If the time is, is bigger than two times the diameter, is the time is two is, is time t is, is bigger than two, uh, uh, twice the diameter of x the albedo operator a uniquely determines sigma and k so and you will have exactly the same stability estimate so everything also holds for uh, 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 for non isotropic sigma uh, provided uh, that you are considering uniqueness up to gauge invariance. Uh, uh, I, I would like to add something. Uh, so uh, uh, someone, uh, some, uh, 
someone asked about uh, what happened when uh, sigma is non isotropic and uh, can we recover sigma in that case so uh, in general you have good gene variants and you cannot uh, you cannot uh, drop it it's not possible but if uh, the scattering k is uh, always uh, positive so uh, assume that k uh, never vanish on the domain and assume that k and sigma has some symmetry assumption so the symmetry assumption is that sigma xv is equal to sigma x minus v and k x v prime v equal to k uh, x v v prime so in that case if you collect this free condition then uh, you you can uh, you can prove that you 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 do not have any Golgi invariance. So it means that in in this case where the scattering k is uh, is uh, has some kind of symmetry, which is just you permute v and v prime, and this is the same uh, coefficient, and also non-vanishing conditions that k is positive uh, all over the domain, and another condition sigma xv equal to sigma x minus v in that case you can uniquely recover sigma and k so it's, it's just a game to prove that under this condition assuming that sigma and sigma tilde have the same uh, the same symmetry assumption and k tilde and k have the same symmetry assumption it's just a game to prove that phi is, is necessarily equal to one all over the uh, is equal to uh, one on x times v. But so you see that you need some additional information. So you need to have some symmetries on the coefficient and also a non-vanishing kernel k. So it's 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 a funny fact that in that case when k is uh, is non-vanishing, it brings you additional information on sigma. Because if we were only dealing with, with X-ray transform, then it won't be possible uh, to recover sigma uniquely in that case. So in, in this case, when, when you add symmetry assumption and non-vanishing K, the scattering helps you to recover sigma uniquely. But it's a very particular case. Okay, so let me uh, recall that we have the same uh, kind of stability estimates in general. And of course you can uh, again uh, build the same kind of uh, conditional stability as, as before, which uh, express uh, uh, a stability of uh, sigma uh, with respect to some subordinate norm uh, bonded above by uh, an operator norm of uh, of uh, the albedo uh, up to some uh, older uh, exponent. Okay. So now uh, let me jump to another problem where uh, you uh, reduce the number of measurements and uh, and also uh, you uh, you 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 allow um, sources which are not anymore angularly resolved. So now you will assume that uh, your, your measurements are um, uh, angularly averaged and also the source are angularly averaged. So for the stationary case, uh, it means that you have an albedo operator. Uh, I put air. M, um, moi, M moi of G. So G is the light source, it's now only dependent on X. And uh, it's uh, the albedo operator, take G and, uh, and uh, you have this measurements with its average measurements of A, J, where A was our previous uh, albedo operator. So this is a uh, the trace of uh, u where u is the solution of the transport equation with a boundary common co condition given by g uh, with this weight which is due to the uh, the measure we are considering on uh, on 
uh, on uh, the boundary of x times v. So this is our new uh, albedo operator. So in this work, they were interested in recovering k from uh, uh, this, this new uh, measurements and sources. And so uh, they have, uh, uh, so we have done an analysis under uh, some uh, assumptions that k is now only isotropic. So k depends only on x and sigma is known and small. So <clears throat> by some uh, uh, careful analysis, we were able to prove that uh, in that case, you can recover some uh, the low frequencies of k up to some, uh, some explicit uh, error. So it's a very, uh, so, so you see that um, when you drop uh, uh, precise uh, sources in the, and precise uh, um, measurements, then things uh, degrade uh, uh, a lot because uh, you, you obtain this, uh, you, you, you do not have any more reconstruction of K as we had before and Sigma as we had before. It's, it's much more, it's much worse. So what I have done in that, uh, in that uh, subject is uh, to consider the non-stationary case. So our now average measurements are given by uh, time-dependent sources, which are isotropic in X. And you uh, again have uh, this, uh, this ex same measurements, but time-dependent. So if you use uh, the Dyson-Phillips formula, which uh, is an expansion of the semi-group U, uh, then you have uh, this explicit uh, expression for uh, any term HM, which is given by this this integral and uh, you can put this expansion into the formula for the unique solution u with boundary uh, condition given by phi the light source phi and you end up with this formula and then if you consider traces at the boundary you obtain a, a decomposition of the albedo operator which is given by uh, this so A is not A0 plus a uh, uh, sum of AM. And each AM have a, a scattering uh, kernel, I uh, have a, a distribution kernel gamma M. And you have explicit uh, formula for each of them gamma M. But uh, we are only interested in, uh, in the first one first ones. So the first one is gamma zero, which is given by this formula. And gamma one is given by uh, this formula. So he x x prime is uh, again, the x ray uh, exponential of minus the x ray transform of sigma over the segment x x prime. So it's a new notation that I will use. And here you have uh, uh, E X, X minus S V X prime. So uh, in this case, uh, the formula uh, for multiple points is, uh, is defined in inductively by this formula. So the first term contains information about the X ray transform of Sigma again, and gamma one contain uh, information of on the scattering kernel k and all gamma m uh, uh, I, I, I are uh, more have, have a more complex expression. So uh, what we will uh, do? So first, you see that you still have a singular. Uh, Singular, uh, singular distribution here, you have a delta function in time, while the second term is, is, uh, is now a function. You have no uh, singular, uh, super, the support of gamma one is not anymore, um, uh, <clears throat> uh, so the support of gamma one is, 
is uh, of the same dimension of uh, of the dimension of uh, um, this uh, of r times uh, the boundary of x times the boundary of x. So and uh, but so and this is also true for gamma and there are all functions. So using this delta function in time, you can separate this term from all over uh, as as before. So it means that again in that setting you will be able to reconstruct uh, the x-ray transform of sigma. For the other terms, uh, you you will play on another uh, another regime, and it is given by uh, the following results. So if you look at gamma two, which is just the sum of all gamma m for m greater uh, or equal to two, then you have this kind of regularity. So it's bonded when the dimension is two. Uh, you have this, uh, this regularity when n is equal to three and this regularity when n is uh, bigger or equal to four. And for gamma one, you have this regularity when n is greater or equal to two. So these results are also uh, under uh, some uh, additional assumption on k and sigma. We assume that they are continuous and they vanish near the boundary of, uh, of the domain x. <clears throat> so one way to separate gamma one to uh, big gamma two, is to play with uh, the singularity, which is given right here. So basically we will look at the asymptotics of uh, gamma one when tau goes to this quantity. So when tau goes to the uh, distance between X and X prime. So it will allow us to separate uh, gamma one to from the, uh, it will allow us uh, to uh, separate single scattering photon to multiple scattering photon. So the results about the asymptotic of the single scattering term is given right here. So gamma one is, uh, as I told you, so T zero is the distance between X and X zero prime. You again pick a point X zero prime at the boundary. You pick a point X at the boundary two, and uh, then you look at the asymptotic as I said. So you have this uh, this formula. So the interesting thing is uh, is given right here because it tells you what 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 you can get from this asymptotics. So from this asymptotics, you recover a weighted X-ray transform of uh, K V zero. So here KV0 is, uh, is defined by this formula and the weighted X-ray transform is, uh, the, is the integral over the straight line of the function F with the weight which is given right here. So the weight is, uh, is defined by, uh, by this formula here. So it's not anymore as nice as before because uh, we know by an example of uh, Bowman that uh, not all weighted uh, X-ray transform are invertible. So we, we, uh, we need to be careful about this one. Is this one with this specific weight invertible? And the answer uh, is, uh, is a yes in certain case. So just uh, before I, uh, I show you these cases, these particular cases, let me uh, show you some uh, very first uh, stability estimates. So the, the stability estimates that you have from uh, this anal analysis is uh, given right here. So you have uh, 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 some uh, L infinity, uh, uh, L1 uh, norm of uh, on the x ray exponential of minus the x ray transform of sigma, uh, bonded by a norm, operator norm of, uh, of our measurement operator. 
And for the other one, you have a strange stability estimate, which is not anymore as nice as before. And uh, it gives you a, a bond on this uh, attenuated uh, weighted X-ray transform of K V0 prime with respect to this norm of the on the distribution kernel. So it's not anymore as nice as before because it means that to get a stability of estimates on K, uh, on K, you have to uh, to know exactly the scattering uh, the absorption coefficient sigma, uh, in order to retrieve uh, gamma one uh, gamma zero. Okay, so I see. Uh, yes. Okay, everything is up. Yes. Okay. So you you need to retrieve gamma zero from uh, from uh, the the distribution kernel of Amoy to get uh, a stability estimate on K. So Alexander, I just have a question. So with regard to that uh, the Bowman's example, right? So in the, the in the in the previous in the previous slide, yes, your weight does not oscillate. Is that is that the reason? This new not new not of x comma v. Uh, can you repeat? So this new knot of x comma v that you have, that's the way. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That does not oscillate near the boundary. Is that is that the reason? No, I, the the real reason why I'm I'm talking about uh, Jan Bowman is just to say that in some cases uh, you have to be careful about weighted X-ray transform. Uh, for this weight, you are you are totally right. Uh, the reason why uh, we are careful is just that because we didn't uh, made a, a careful analysis of uh, of this weighted X-ray transform. You, we we have used uh, general uh, theorems for inverting uh, this uh, X-ray weighted X-ray transform. So in particular, uh, our uh, inversion is uh, is um, comes from uh, Inversion of weighted X-ray transform when the boundary is real and analytic. In that case, uh, the weight is real analytic, and uh, we have a general results on the inversion of weighted uh, X-ray transform when the weight is real analytic. Okay, I see. So you 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 use some uh, microlocal analysis techniques. Is that correct? Yeah, 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 yeah. At, at the end, uh, we are using this kind of results. We are, but we are not proving anything. We are just using known results. Okay, all right. Thanks. But uh, I'm I'm coming. Uh, I'm coming uh, to to this. You you'll see what I mean. So okay. So this is the first stability results now. Uh, it is a uh, part of your answer. So when you take a ball, uh, in that case, our uh, our weighted transform uh, reduces to uh, an X-ray transform. So the weight here uh, uh, becomes a function of rho of X. Uh, and uh, where I didn't put the rho of X, ah. Okay, you have to believe me. I, I didn't put. Uh, I didn't put. Sorry about that. Uh, so the the row of x has a special uh, is as a explicit value. But I do not remember which one is it. But um, so I can tell you at least uh, in uh, now. So in, in the case of a ball, so rho of x is just uh, one minus x square uh, up to the power minus n minus one over two. And uh, so you, you end up with the x squared transform of rho times s. And in that case, you everything reduced to, uh, to inverting the X-ray transform. So it's a basic result. And uh, from, from here, you can uh, obtain uh, a stability estimate on uh, sigma and uh, K0, where K0 uh, is defined as uh, through a, a particular form of K. So we assume that K can be written at K0, the isotropic part, times G, where G is assumed to be known and positive. 
And in that case, uh, with uh, with the recovery of the uh, of this term, this, this weighted x ray transform, we are able to have a, a, a Sobolev norm you know, of order minus one over two of k zero with respect to uh, to some norms on the measurements. Again, it's not that clean, but uh, at, at least we have some stability estimate. And again, if you uh, assume that uh, you, you sigma and k zero have some uh, smoothness, so you can you can derive a conditional stability estimate. Now, for the answer to uh, for, to the last question, so we assume that now the, the boundary is real analytic, and we still have uh, the same decomposition on K, but this time G is also assumed to be real analytic. And in this case, uh, we uh, there are results of uh, inverting uh, the uh, <coughs> the x ray transform with real analytic weight. And it is possible with, with the use of these uh, results to obtain uh, this, this stability estimate, which is given here. So I forgot about uh, the reference, but I think it was uh, Quinto with, uh, with collaborators. So in, in the 90s. So now let me talk about uh, other problems where you have uh, inverse transport. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, uh, let me talk about inverse problems, over inverse problems where you have the transport uh, equation, the linear Boltzmann or uh, uh, linear Boltzmann equation. <coughs> so I will talk now about hybrid imaging. So hybrid imaging was, uh, uh, is was a, a field of interest uh, very active uh, the last uh, de decade and uh, the idea is to combine uh, two for example two imagery image uh, imagine techniques uh, in order to obtain a new one which uh, which will have the benefits of uh, both previous uh, two uh, medical uh, techniques. So for example, uh, when you do ultrasound imaging, you have good resolution, but you have bad contrast. And when you do uh, X-ray uh, scan, you have uh, good contrast, but bad resolution. So one, one technique which combines both of them is uh, photoacoustic imaging. So let me show a picture. So you sent, you, you assume that you have a small, uh, a small biological tissue. So usually uh, in this picture, you have a, a, a mouse and you, you send a light beam on this uh, little mouse and uh, <clears throat> the light beam will hit the domain. Uh, I mean, uh, will, uh, so the domain will be heated, heated by the, the, the light beam. You have uh, some heat uh, um, yeah. That thermal expansion, then it uh, it will create a pressure wave inside the inside the body, and and then you will measure the pressure. So the the initial pressure is uh, is dependent of the of the nature of the tissue. And so when you record the pressure at the exit, uh, you, you, you try to recover the initial pressure. So this first step is, uh, was very well studied by, uh, by many, many people. I'm thinking of Cushman and uh, other collaborators. And uh, here we will go. Uh, and at, at this point, if you reconstruct the initial pressure, it's already an image of your body because uh, it will uh, it will depend on the nature of your of your body. But we we wanted to go uh, uh, we wanted to know uh, the link between the initial pressure and the optical parameters because here you send light and the initial pressure will depend on 
again on the optical parameters. The light will propagate uh, again, again with respect to a, a, a linear uh, Boltzmann equation. And the initial pressure will contain information about the optical parameters. And we wanted to, to go back from the initial pressure to the optical parameters. So let me uh, now show you the equation. So here you have the, the wave propagation uh, of the pressure wave. So you have uh, inside the body. So yeah, I put Rn, but you can think of a domain X. And, uh, and the initial pressure P0 is, is, uh, is, so assuming that you have recorded the pressure wave and you have fully recovered the initial pressure, then you have recovered the thermal energy H0, which is defined through the optical parameter by this formula. So sigma A is uh, sigma minus sigma S. So it is actually what we call the true absorption of the medium. And U tilde is, uh, um, is the solution of the non-stationary uh, linear Boltzmann equation with a, a boundary light source given by this, this light source that is eating the domain. <clears throat> so our question was to recover uh, what kind of information we can recover on the optical parameters from this quantity here. And uh, again, you have the integral over the time r. So you can consider instead of u tilde, you can consider the solution of the stationary linear Boltzmann equation instead. And because you assume that sigma a will be always positive, you will have sigma uh, greater than sigma a. So uh, one of the subcritical condition I showed you before is always satisfied. So you have uh, uniqueness, and existence of a solution to the stationary linear Boltzmann equation. So, <clears throat> so now our measurements operator is A, so the new albedo A, which goes to the light source phi to the, uh, to the following L1 uh, function on the uh, space, uh, space, uh, um, space domain big X. And this is given by the thermal energy. So one uh, main difference between uh, the last problems I showed you and this new problem is that we have now internal knowledge uh, of the domain through uh, this quantity. Our measurements are internal measurements. And again, if you use uh, the decomposition I showed you before, I mean the Neumann decomposition. So again, I'm sorry, J is L or L in big L or it's, it's, it's the same. And here T minus one, I, I, let me remind you, it should be T one minus one to be, uh, to be consistent with previous notation. And uh, so you use this Neumann expansion, and again, you have uh, the distribution kernel. So you have a, a decomposition of the albedo apparatus and the distribution kernels, which are given right here. So for the ballistic part, you have this decomposition. So you have this term, you recover this term, and you have again a singularity uh, here. So a delta function in the space variable x prime. And then you have a, a function alpha one and all over a function again, all over uh, scattering kernels are uh, scattering di distribution are, are, uh, are function. So <clears throat> because you have this singularity here, you will be able to retrieve this information from the, the measurements. And then, <clears throat> You, you, you will need to retrieve this information uh, from the multiple, uh, from the single scattering part. So you, you need a way to separate single scattering part and multiple scattering parts. And so the way is to look at the asymptotics when X uh, goes to 
the, the uh, when x is closer and closer to the straight line uh, which uh, uh, pass, passes through x prime in direction v prime. So you you will use this uh, this asymptotics to separate uh, alpha one from the rest the rest. So first, uh, before I show you this asymptotics, a uh, first stability estimate you can obtain is uh, given by this. So you, just using uh, the delta function here. And uh, the, with the same type of scheme I, 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 I showed you before, you have these stability estimates on sigma A and sigma. So, <clears throat> so when k is equal to zero, you have sigma which is equal to sigma A. And you see that uh, this function is just the derivative with respect to t or minus the derivative with respect to t of this function here. And so if you have knowledge on, on this function, it's, you can recover sigma a. And so uh, from this estimate, when k equal to zero, you are able to obtain a, 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 a stability estimate for sigma a, which is given by this. So the, 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 <coughs> the, um, the estimates degrade uh, when, when you took a when you take a point inside the domain. So uh, when the point X prime plus TV prime is uh, far from the domain, you have a, an exponentially decaying uh, weight, which is written here. So it means that the, the reconstruction of sigma A is rather uh, ill pose. Uh, somehow it is, uh, it is an ill pose, uh, uh, severely ill pose problem. <coughs> now, if uh, k is not equal to zero, sigma a and sigma uh, are not the same. But if you assume that sigma and uh, is known and you have the symmetry assumptions that sigma xv equal to sigma x minus v and the same for sigma a, then you can, uh, you can show that you can recover sigma and sigma a from this quantity. And you obtain uh, the, 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 this stability again with this exponentially decaying weight, and uh, which means that the reconstruction is rather severely ill posed. Now, for the single scattering term, uh, as I told you, we use some, uh, some asymptotics. So here you take a point X. So the, the point X will be on the line. Uh, which goes through x prime in direction v prime. And you look at a small displacement from this line, and you look at the asymptotics when the displacement is smaller and smaller. So for alpha one, you will have uh, this quantity, and it will give you information on this quantity k, k which is given right here. <clears throat> so you will have information on uh, this function at this point, v prime, v prime, and v prime minus v prime. So it's already tell you that you cannot recover uh, k fully from this uh, asymptotics. You, you will have to assume again that k has a, a specific form. And here uh, you have uh, uh, for, for the, this, uh, for, for the, dim so this is for the dimension two. In dimension higher, you have uh, this information instead. So again, uh, you won't have be able to recover k exactly. Uh, you will have to assume a specific form. So, <clears throat> so from this asymptotics and uh, this regular uh, behavior here, you can cook up some stability estimate for the scattering kernel uh, general. Uh, stability estimates. So they are not, uh, they are not that good. I mean, uh, the norm are not so, uh, they are not practical. You, for example, here, here you have the same problem as the average measurements uh, because you have a, a norm on, on gamma one minus gamma one tilde. And it means that uh, you, you, will, you will need to retrieve exactly the, the ballistic uh, term from the measurements. 
So it's not uh, in practice. It's it's not that good. It's not good. <clears throat> now, but we can uh, apply our uh, method, uh, our results to uh, a famous um, to the famous Enya Greenstein uh, phase function. So the the Enya Greenstein phase function is given right here. So it has this uh, this formula. And uh, in uh, in our case, we will assume that sigma s is known, and the only thing that we would like to recover is, is the coefficient g of x. And uh, with our asymptotics, we are able to uh, from this quantity which are given here, it's such a, a game to uh, to to prove that uh, g of x is uh, is uniquely determined by the data. Again, uh, sigma s has to be uh, positive. I mean, uh, <clears throat> we have the additional assumption that sigma s is positive. It does not vanish on the domain. Uh, <clears throat> here, again, we have some kind of stability for uh, for our for our. Um, So for the function g, uh, but it's uh, it's not that good. Uh, I mean, we have uh, we have some uh, we have some stability estimates. We are able to derive some stability estimates. <clears throat> Let me check something. So okay, so in um, I just realized um, uh, because it's not written here in in the in the in the in the in the slides, but sigma g uh, uh, here I, I have a, uh, a stability on sigma g, but in that case sigma g uh, is just this term. And in dimension two, and in sigma g is uh, is this term in dimension uh, greater or equal to two, uh, to three. So we have some kind of stability estimates, and uh, okay. So the reference for this work is uh, a work uh, with uh, Guillaume and uh, Vincent Junot. And you have recent uh, activities on this question. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, I would like to mention the work by Frédéric Ren and Valélian and also uh, Zhao Zong. So what they do is, uh, it's not, uh, they, they do not need our analysis because uh, what they do is they replace the ra radiative uh, transfer equation, the linear Boltzmann equation by, uh, by some, uh, what they call the uh, SPN simplified uh, model. So it's somehow you are looking at uh, the moment of uh, the transport solution with respect to the uh, Lebesgue functions, Le Lebesgue function, and in and uh, in that case you replace the transform uh, transport equation by uh, uh, a finite number of uh, uh, equation on these moments and. Um, the analysis <laughs> is slightly uh, is uh, is uh, is different. They they propose a numerical test, and uh, but it's a, it's interesting work on uh, photo quantitative photoacoustic imaging. And uh, and, there are, and this is uh, quite recent. So let me jump to another hybrid imaging problem. So it's called acousto-optic imaging. The reference is written right here. So the idea is um, you do the measurements uh, as we uh, we first did. So you have an external light source. You measure the outgoing light. And uh, in between, you send an ultrasound wave. 
And so the ultrasound wave will have the effect to modify uh, the optical parameters as follows. So you see, so you have this factor here, which is due to the effects of the ultrasound wave. So Q is the wave vector and phi is the phase uh, of, the, of the acoustic wave. And so the idea again is uh, to, do, to go from boundary measurements that we, we have done before to internal measurements using uh, several uh, wave, wave acoustic wave. So it's a, it's a game to, uh, to buy a Fourier uh, inversion to show that if you collect all albedo operators for this, uh, this pair of optical parameters, it's a game to show that uh, the, the, the information you get are internal and it is given by this quantity. So for any point X inside the domain, you have uh, this average over the velocity space of WG V grad X UF, where UF solves the linear Boltzmann equation, stationary linear Boltzmann equation with the boundary source uh, defined by the light source F. And WG uh, satisfies the adjoint RTE with this uh, boundary uh, condition G. And so playing with uh, F and G, we are able uh, to recover sigma X and K of X in any dimension. And for, um, and we have explicit formulas. Uh, for a specific source, which, which are uh, uh, more than isotropic because the, 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 the sources does not depend on the space variable. <clears throat> so it was an, another example of hybrid imaging. Now I will talk about uh, inverse source problems that I... Uh, so the first classical uh, uh, inverse source problem is the attenuity dex ray transform. So the, the, the source uh, is inside the domain now, and it's, uh, it's modeled by the function f. And the, the, now you do not send any light uh, through the domain. So what is the light source now is uh, inside. And the measurements are the same. So you measure at the boundary the external, uh, external light. And so your, your measurement is for only one. Uh, you, you, you just uh, have one measurement, which is given by the attenuated X-ray transform. So you see that you have a weighted X-ray transform and the weight is given by this. So this weighted X-ray transform was uh, inverted uh, quite recently by uh, Novikov in uh, 2002. So the inversion formulas he provided is uh, very uh, similar to some inversion formula for the Radon transform, and it uses complex, basic complex analysis. So it's not uh, uh, it's not a hard uh, technique. I mean, it's not. Uh, um, I, I mean, uh, you you can uh, you can look at uh, you can easily look at the proof and so on. It's uh, it's uh, it's a nice application of. Uh, complex analysis so, so um, and, and, and before and before that you have uh, you have also some kind of uh, inversion formula or reconstruction formula by, by book game in uh, 1995 and here it's more uh, so here it's uh, defined from what they called uh, the analytic function theory so it's something different it uh, is defined through series and um, uh, it's not the same as uh, these uh, formulas which uh, were striking for the community. Yes? Uh, so, Alexander, just one question. So, this one, the uh, Novikovs, uh, is also for the 2D case, right? Uh, yes. And uh, it can be extended to like ND by like some slice by slice thing or something? Uh, I, I don't know. I didn't think of it. I mean, um, here you you don't you you don't uh, it's not a problem because uh, it's like for the x-ray transform you just uh, slice uh, 
the domain in uh, in two planes, and on each plane you recover uh, you recover the uh, the function f from the data, assuming that sigma is known here. Uh, of course, I didn't say it, but here in this inverse source problems, sigma is assumed to be known. You, and and in here you want to recover uh, f from uh, the measurements. So I, I didn't. So I forgot to tell you the contest. Uh, the, it, uh, it so this this uh, this inversion formula are important in the, the spec tomography. So spec tomography is a single photo emission computerized tomography. So you 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 uh, you uh, set, you uh, put some uh, radioactive uh, uh, markers uh, in, inside the body of someone, and so these uh, markers will. Uh, Will go uh, into the uh, uh, cancerous cancerous cells, for example, and they, they they will they will emit emit light, and so so this is the sources you want to recover because if you want if you have F, it means that you have the location of the cancerous cancerous cells. So that's why it's so uh, interesting and important in practice. Okay, what was your question? And, and, so, and, so, and so in that case, uh, here you, you do not have any scattering. So it means that everything uh, stay in a plane and you can uh, slice if you have a 3D, uh, 3D space, you can slice the, the, the space into planes and on, on each plane you recover your function f from, from your data. Okay, yeah, that was, that, that was actually my question. The other thing is now the, the 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 question of recovering both sigma and f from this is from p sigma f is still open, right? Yeah, yeah. Actually, it's not open. Uh, you have example. You cannot do it. A very simple example. Uh, we have done this with Guillaume, and uh, we have some kind of analysis. But in in theory, uh, you cannot do it. Uh, you can produce sigma and f. Uh, several pair, two pairs of sigma and f, two distinct pairs of sigma and f, will, which will produce the same data. But uh, so what we have done with Guillaume is some kind of analysis of uh, a linearization of uh, consistency condition on the X, attenuated X-ray transform. But I know uh, a work of uh, Stefanov uh, afterwards. Uh, he, he has done some uh, micro local analysis of this problem, so reconstruction of singularities. And he also have a paper with uh, another person, I forgot his name. So it's a numerical, uh, so they, they applied uh, the, the, his, his work. Uh, they, they, they have constructed numerical uh, uh, algorithm. And uh, they have some pictures, so you can look at it. Uh, it is okay. uh, it is done, but in theory, uh, as far as I can remember, uh, you uh, this problem uh, cannot uh, you you do not have uniqueness. If sigma is unknown, you do not have uniqueness by simple example. If you have uh, if you are able to kill this example by some condition, then it 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 is open certainly certainly open. But uh, you can look at what uh, Plamen uh, Stefanov has done. Uh, the, the issue is that it, it's so long time, I haven't looked at it, uh, I do not remember, so. Yeah, I do, I do remember that paper, I'll take a look at it. Yeah, thanks. Sorry. And so uh, the next uh, slide is about bioluminescence uh, tomography. So now you still have a sources, but now you have a scattering effect. So you are working with uh, lower, uh, photo energy. And uh, again, sigma and k are known, and you want to recover uh, s from the data. So here, uh, what they have done is that uh, they, they applied, uh, again, some pseudo differential techniques uh, on the measurement operator x. So x is a measurement. It sent s to the measurement, uh, which is uh, u. Uh, you restricted to gamma plus, where u is a solution of this. And so uh, you have some kind of, uh, um, I mean, uh, if you take the action of x uh, with x, uh, somehow it's uh, uh, an invertible uh, uh, pseudo differential operator. And uh, 
uh, provided that you have some kind of smoothness on sigma and k. And so uh, what they do is that they can uh, uh, prove uniqueness of this problem for a dense set of uh, this, uh, this uh, optical parameters. So it's very close to the question I told you about uh, compactness and uh, subcritical condition. So this condition uh, of dense set, it first proves that uh, you have existence of uniqueness of the solution U. So it proves that it is uh, well posed. And I, again, uh, again, then you still have some uh, use to, to compactness for, for, this, uh, for this operator X to have, uh, to have in order to be sure that it is one to one. But it's, uh, it's, it's specific to the techniques uh, developed by uh, Stefanov and Ullmann. And uh, <clears throat> then you have also a paper by uh, Baltamasan who, who treats these problems under uh, an assumption that K is small and, uh, and sigma is, uh, I far as I remember, you do not have any uh, assumption on sigma. <clears throat> now, uh, I, I just, uh, okay, so, uh, okay, you can also have an hybrid imaging uh, problem with this bioluminescence uh, um, tomography. So again, you use the Poisson to perturb the optical parameters. Here it will be perturb the, the sources and then uh, uh, you can, uh, you can recover S from the internal data that, uh, that provides, uh, that are uh, provided. <clears throat> now, let me jump to, uh, to comments. I think I'm over time now. So I have just two slides uh, to finish the lectures. So I just want to, uh, to talk about non-refractive index. Uh, so when you have a medium with non-refractive index, then light propagation is, uh, is better modeled by, uh, by uh, an, uh, a transport equation uh, in a Riemannian manifold. So here, uh, our domain X is now uh, a, a Riemannian manifold M endowed with a Riemannian metric G. G stands for the refractive index. And our operator V grad X U is replaced by the derivative of U along the geodesic flows, flow of uh, MG. So you have a lot of, uh, so here it's a unit sphere uh, of, uh, the unit sphere with respect to the Riemannian metric So you have a lot of work with, uh, who, uh, which, which considers all what I said in uh, this Riemannian setting. So is, is, is in particular, for example, uh, McDowell and, and collaborators. And, uh, you also have, I have to mention that uh, when k is equal to zero, you end up with the geodesic X-ray transform. Uh, for the inverse source problem, I showed you the attenuated X-ray transform become uh, the geodesic attenuated Hardon transform. So you add, a, you add a, a lot of activities in this, uh, in this subject, uh, this uh, past 20 years. And uh, uh, well, I think Venki is much more, uh, uh, could answer uh, all your question about it. And uh, another uh, important remark is that uh, when uh, you have a small absorption, interesting absorption, when so when sigma a is uh, small and you have a, a large scattering, uh, so sigma s is, is large, uh, your, your model of uh, transport equation uh, through the linear Boltzmann equation is better modeled by your uh, <clears throat> by an equation, a diffusion equation, where I of X is now somehow the average of our transport solution over the velocity space. So again, uh, if you replace the transport equation by this diffusion equation, you have a lot of uh, papers who deal with the same problem I showed you. And there are more, uh, there are more uh, maybe more practical uh, uh, than us because uh, I, I do not have any uh, laser point, but if you have a laser point and you shine uh, your laser through your, 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 your finger, you will see a red glow. And so it means you have a lot of scattering events. So in, the, in that uh, very simple case, 
uh, you see that the diffusion equation is better to describe light propagation. And uh, another uh, transport regime is given by the highly peak forward scattering, where light propagation is. Uh, so it means that the scattering is, uh, is uh, very high uh, for the forward direction. So if you have a photon uh, which uh, travel like this, uh, he, the, the scattering is very high for uh, direction in, the, in, in that direction and, and close to the initial uh, direction. And in that case, uh, the transport regime is better, uh, the light propagation is better uh, modeled by a Fokker plant equation, which is given by here. And uh, I give reference to Kim Keller. So it has application in uh, skin cancer detection. So, and uh, also uh, I give you reference to a review paper by Guillaume. And uh, you have recent works on this equation, uh, for example, Prevac, Cordurier, Osses, Castaneda, Palacios, Ertel in 2020. So I would like to thank you uh, for the invitation again, and uh, I'm done. Uh, thank you very much, Alexander, for the very nice talks. Uh, any questions? Uh, so, Alexander, I have one last question. So, the the, the one about that in the in the Riemannian manifold regimes, right? So, you have to put some. Uh, some restrictions show that you know the 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 geodesic ray transform is invertible, right? Uh, <clears throat> yeah, yeah, yeah. Most probably, uh, yes. For for the specific problems, I I have looked at yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. But I I it's uh, outside the 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 talks. Uh, I mean, uh, you know that uh, uh, this subject is, uh, uh, is um, you, you, you know, uh, I think you know pretty well what is still open and uh, what is solved. And uh, for example, the, the, you, you have to assume sometimes that uh, you have simple Riemannian manifolds. Correct, to correct. To, to be sure that everything is nicely invertible. And uh, I, I, I would like to, 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 to say that, uh, for example, the attenuated radon transform uh, uh, on simple Riemannian manifolds, we, uh, we only knew, know that it is a one-to-one. -one. Uh, it, it was done by Salo and collaborators uh, only a few years ago, I guess. Correct. Right. So, uh, so, so you you still have a lot of open questions, and uh, I, I mean, you will have the talk of uh, Gunther Ullmann. So, I guess he will talk about a lot of uh, open problem in ge Riemannian geometry. Yeah. Uh, and uh, application, for example, for uh, boundary distance uh, rigidity in dimension greater or equal to three. Right. So, so. Uh, I mean, you have uh, you have problems uh, that are still unsolved since uh, since uh, maybe now fifty years. I don't know. Uh, for example, Michel states the conjecture for boundary rigidity. It was in the eighties, so it it is now forty years ago. So you still have open problems which which uh, attracts a lot of attention in in that uh, Riemannian setting. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Alexander. Any any other questions? Okay. If not, um, so let me thank you very much for again for the uh, nice set of lectures. Yeah. Thanks yeah, a lot. I hope to run into you sometime uh, okay. in, in a conference or you know. Uh, yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Bye bye. Bye.